Mm, I've got a note here somewhere. What is this? Healing is transcending. Mm. Recording. Are you recording? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Sorry, <laughs> I jumped up and I thought we were ready. Sorry. That's okay. Did you lock the room? I'll do a little song and dance while you do what you need to do. But oh. um <laughs> Okay, hi everybody. Hi everyone. Yep. We're on um, lesson 159. I give the miracles I have received. And I think I'm reading it. You are. Thanks. Sis. Please. Okay. No one can give what he has not received. To give a thing requires first you have it in your own possession. Well, we have to, right? <laughs> we can't give something away that we don't already have. Here, the laws of heaven and the world agree. But here they also separate. The world believes that to possess a thing, it must be kept, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And chained <laughs> and locked away. Salvation teaches otherwise. To give is how to recognize you have received. It is the proof that what you have is yours. In other words, we can't know what we have until we give it away. Very different. <laughs> than what the ego tells us yeah no there's something else here that's just a down a quick download that i just got yeah, there's yeah, this, yeah. when we have things we don't really know that they're ours because there's still fear involved oh. there's a limitation someone might take it i have a limited amount of i can't let these go right because how would i replenish it there's fear around it it might be in my possession but i don't recognize it that it's really mine. And the only way that what I possess drops into a knowing state that it's mine and it's safe and it's secure is when I give it away. So that I recognize in my sharing and giving it away that that's real. There's that felt state. That's the difference in the last lesson when we talked about the difference between experience and, and Christ vision. So the experience is, oh, I have lots, but I'm hoarding it and I'm afraid of losing it. I'm not even enjoying it. I don't know that I really have it. But mm -hmm. when I share it with someone and experience the feeling state, then I know at a felt level that it's already what I am. It's not something that I, a thing that I possess, but it's already included in me. That feeling state transcends the thinking mind and it gives us that recollection i am the kingdom of heaven and so i can give an outpouring liberally abundantly bless my brothers and all it will ever do is increase in myself hmm. wow thanks beautifully guys. said thank you and while you were speaking mm. <laughs> funny how this happens isn't it i love it i love it, I love it. Uh, well, what I and I, I haven't put the pieces together of this because I'm just hearing it now mm -hmm. is personal gain. When we uh, when we try and when we try to get acquire something, particularly special relationships, mm -hmm. when we try to acquire for personal gain, mm -hmm. it comes from fear. So there must be loss associated with it. No wonder. We cannot, mm, we can't seem to transcend that fear of losing what we've gained because of the motive behind it, which is to keep it exclusive and not inclusive. This is big. That's really big. And, and there's something else here too, right? Mm -hmm. So I might need some help in unpacking this. Is it? Healing, true healing, is transcending self-interest, oh. right? Yes. Which is the, the ego's need for personal gain. We must receive the healing first, which is the undoing of personal gain, 
which is the undoing of fear, right, in order to give it. Otherwise, you know, when we're trying to help somebody else, mm -hmm. otherwise we're giving fear and not giving healing. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally, sis. So if, really? I am, oh, that's great. if I am mythical me, I am a state of lack and I'm a getting machine. So I'm going to get what I need out there where the numbers are limited. And I'm going to get the love that I need from one brother, one special brother, right? I'm going to get, I'm taking from my brother what I think that I need and health. I'm, I am in lack, I lack health. And so I'm going to be seeking it, you know, somewhere else. Or if somebody asks me for help, I don't have it to give because I believe that I'm in lack. Mm. So we don't, you can't overcome that while you're seeking, you know, this external to get, mm. it's, but it's in that recognition that you have it because you are it. And from that abundant place, then you can, extend some kind of value but this whole thing about specialness right yeah some some special love in one person to make love a privatized thing to fill up this gap within and yet to come to that realization we are love that's what we are and that's what we were created to extend so that we have it infinitely to to extend anyway i just i'm I'm really jazzed on what you just shared. I'm feeling it more than I can say it, but I think it just applies across the board. That starting point, am I mythical me that I'm lacking? If I am the Christ, I am the fullness of God, the presence of God. And there's nothing that I can desire that won't be given to me to share. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> okay. Wow. Um, maybe... Yeah, I don't know if to introduce this here now, which is a reminder, uh, or whether we should just keep reading. Okay, I think we just keep reading. Okay, so, um, so I'm on the second paragraph, right? Yes. Okay. You understand that you are healed when you give healing. I'm going to say that again. You understand that you are healed when you give healing. You accept forgiveness as accomplished in yourself when you forgive. You recognize your brother as yourself and thus do you perceive that you are whole. There is no miracle you cannot give for all are given you. All of them. Wow. Wow. Receive them now by opening the storehouse of your mind where they are laid and giving them away. There um, the what I'm hearing, go on, sis, what were you going to say? The storehouse of our mind. Everything is in mind. It's not out in the bank account. It's not in your job. It's not in your relationships. That, or in that, your body as a pleasure drive. That's right. The kingdom of heaven is within, he said. There it is. Oh, by opening the storehouse of your mind where everything is laid and giving it away. And as you give it, you know that it is yours. I'm sorry. Go ahead, sis. Yeah, ahead. no, it's good. It's This is great. Yeah. What's coming in here now mm -hmm. is, again, communication is the key with, and I mean capital C communication, the only communication is the love of God that we are with each other and God, right? Right. Holy Spirit. Now, that communication is broken whenever we go into fear and believing that we need to uh, get for personal gain or, you know, uh, exclusive relationships all of this kind of thing. So actually, while the ego says, no, this is communication, we're actually breaking communication because we're, we're entrenched in fear and fear breaks communication. Does so would you say that whenever we're using a relationship to get no true communication is taking place? Exactly. And no true healing is taking place. So how the means by which 
we restore communication, holy communication again, which is health. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. True communication is health, even in the body. Because remember, the body's in the mind and ideas leave not their source. So um, true communication is restored via love. And capital L. High, yeah, capital L. The highest, I guess, way of restoring that communication, which is the love, is through forgiveness. Yes. That restores communication. Forgiveness restores communication. And therefore, forgiveness restores health. It restores everything that we might appear to need here in the dream while we're here. Sis, don't you have a, a blog on this? I do. I think that would oh. be really, really helpful to, to flesh one. out this point that you're making about sickness and the relationship that sickness has with blocked communication, because I think people who are listening are going to be like, what? Yeah, um, it's huge. It's called, um, you know, I've forgotten what it's called. All sickness Again, is, what's it called? Well, I oh, I know. All, all sickness is blocked communication. Yeah. And, and it's not just sickness as we know it in the body. It's, um, you know, scarcity, deprivation, conflict, uh, all of this. It's all sickness. Yeah. yeah. So all of it is block communication so there is a blog and what we're going to do is we're going to place the link to the audio of that blog uh right there at the top of the description box here on the youtube channel for this lesson so we do encourage you to actually listen to that blog very very helpful can we just flesh a little bit of it out here real quick about if if what we are is the love of God. Mm -hmm. And our whole point of being is to express love. Love requires relationship. Love by its nature has to be expressed. Oh, it has to be extended, sis. Otherwise, it can't be received. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So we are to receive that loving impulse from the Creator God in our mind and to extend or express. Yeah. And so this idea of, well, I'm mythical me is really, again, the way that we shunt off that love. We, we make the body the end instead of the means as a communication device. We shunt off that love and we try to hoard it and keep it here and we don't extend it. We become fearful of our brothers through the world, through the dream of separation. And so what happens is these impulses literally get backed up. It's like, it's just like a drain that has been clogged and it's not in its function anymore. And it's not being given the freedom and consent to move with what it was tailored to do. And that's what makes the body ill or inharmonious or imbalanced or whatever. Right. Yeah. Like I just got it. Then all heart attacks come from this. Oh Gosh. Yes. Yes. So, and, and all, all thoughts really it's not just a, about a physical body it's when when the thoughts of love are interrupted by thoughts of the ego which are what fear guilt hatred envy jealousy competition all judgment right all opinions selfish all of it everything a to z within the ego thought system our mind contracts as soon as we feel fear what happens to the love the love's coming through and we feel fear. That's how we say no to the love that we are. And that's how we try to, you know, live out this mythical me who's always afraid and feeling guilty and, and calling in self-attack. So it's about our thoughts that need to be looked at. And those unhealthy thoughts are what gets projected out onto the body, making the body ill. So mm -hmm. that's how we can say all sickness is the failure to allow true communication to occur beautifully explained thank you thanks sis yeah, it's yeah. A big, we need to see the connection yeah yeah okay. thank you oh, what a lesson 
Yeah, some of these lessons are total depth charges, aren't they? Oh, boy, the ripple effect that comes from them is just incredible. Um, now, I'm on paragraph number three. Three. Christ's vision is a miracle. It comes from far beyond itself, for it reflects eternal love and the rebirth of love, which never dies, but has been kept obscure. Christ's vision pictures heaven, for it sees a world so like to heaven, to heaven that what God created perfect can be mirrored there. So it gets reflected here. Right. in the dream mm -hmm. the darkened glass the egos the darkened glass the world presents can show but twisted images in broken parts the real world pictures heaven's innocence christ's vision is the miracle in which all miracles are born it is their source this is so important it is their source remaining with each miracle you give and yet remaining yours, right? Yes. Yeah. It is the bond by which the giver and receiver are united in extension here on earth as they are one in heaven. That's that holy instant, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, yeah. Christ beholds no sin in anyone. And in his sight, the sinless are as one. Their holiness was given by his father and himself. Christ's vision is the bridge between the worlds. He's speaking about between the ego dream and the real world dream. Mm -hmm. The real world is a dream as well, mm -hmm. but it's the final dream we have before we return home to heaven yeah so christ's vision is the bridge between the worlds and i would add to that too is that um part of part of the attaining of christ vision or the remembrance of christ vision part of that involves holy relating holy relationships Okay, because the bridge to the real world is Christ's vision and Christ's vision is returned to us fully through holy relationship. Yes, because that's is, the whole point of the holy yeah. relationship. Every relationship without the Christ in it is the ego relating and that is attack and separation. But the, the whole point behind the holy relationship is that I'm going to forsake the world that we made. I'm going to go within and ask and receive from Christ our true identity, what the truth is, so that I can extend it to my brother, right? And that's what unites us. It's like I received it, I extend it, my brother's blessed by it, and I am blessed by it. And because in, that, in the effect of that joining, we're both blessed and we realize the oneness, the unity. And it's in that that we realize there was no separation. Right. Right. Yeah. What seems so terrifying before falls away to the nothingness yep. that it always was. Absolutely. And because it's holographic, mm -hmm. it heals every area of our life. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's why I thank all of you for life. Capital L. <laughs> Me too. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Okay, um, Christ's vision is the bridge between the worlds and in its power can you safely trust to carry you from this world into one made holy by forgiveness. Things which seem quite solid here are merely shadows there, transparent, faintly seen, at times forgot and never able to obscure the light that shines beyond them. Holiness has been restored to vision and the blind can see. I will just speak from experience here is that I am experiencing this quite often, uh, this feeling. I'm not saying I'm there yet fully, but that doesn't matter. I don't care. Uh, the thing is that 
I'm noticing particularly just recently that the body, the body actually um, falls away in perception when we join in holy instance, when particularly when we have a joint holy instance, mm -hmm. like you, sis, and I have had many. My partner, Daniel, we have had the most amazing joint holy instance as well in holy relationship. And <clears throat> the body literally falls away. I mean, it becomes transparent. And so it's giving us uh, a little taste, a small taste of what the experience is in the real world dream, yeah. where everything that seems so solid and so fearful here mm -hmm. is merely transparent there. Because the love, that's what we're seeing. We're seeing the love. Yes. It restores communication. And because it restores communication, anything that is not love is merely perceived as shadows, mm -hmm. not threats. Mm -hmm. Imagine how great that is. Thank you, sis, for sharing your experience with that. Yeah. yeah. See the light beyond it. That's seeing beyond appearances to the light beyond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know you've also had oh, experiences yeah. of that, right? Yes. Okay, next paragraph is six, I think. Mm -hmm. Or not? Yes. Uh, yeah. This is the Holy Spirit's single gift, the treasure house, to which you can appeal with perfect certainty. I love that perfect certainty for all the things that can contribute to your happiness, all are laid here already. All can be received but for the, but for the asking. Here the door is never locked and no one is denied his least request or his most urgent need. There is no sickness. I'll say that again. There is no sickness not already healed. He means that literally, by the way. This is not metaphor. There is no lack unsatisfied, no need unmet within this golden treasury of Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Here does the world remember what was lost when it was made, when the world was made. For here it is repaired, made new again, but in a different light. What was, what was to be the home of sin becomes the centre of redemption and the hearth of mercy, where the suffering are healed and welcome. No one will be turned away from this new home where his salvation waits. No one is stranger to him no one asks for anything of him except the gift of his acceptance of his welcoming christ's vision is the holy ground in which the lilies of forgiveness set their roots this is their home they can be brought from here back to the world but they can never grow in its unnourishing and shallow soil they need the light and warmth and kindly care Christ's charity provides. They need the love with which he looks on them. And they become his messengers who give as they received. Mm -hmm. Take from his storehouse that its treasures may increase. His lilies, lilies of forgiveness, do not leave their home when they are carried back into the world, their roots remain. Oh, I just got the chills then. Love that, yeah. They do not leave their source, but carry its beneficence with them and turn the world into a garden like the one they came from and to which they go again with added fragrance. I could smell it now. Yeah. Now are they twice blessed? The messages they brought from Christ have been delivered and returned 
to them. And they returned them gladly unto him. Behold the store of miracles set out for you to give. Are you not worth the gift? When God appointed it be given you? Judge not God's son, but follow in the way he has established. Christ has dreamed the dream of a forgiven world. It is his gift whereby a sweet transition can be made from death to life, from hopelessness to hope. Let us an instant dream with him. His dream awakens us to truth. His vision gives us, sorry, his vision gives the means for a return to our unlost and everlasting sanctity in God. Wow, what a lesson. I give the miracles I have received. I love that about the added fragrance and now are they twice blessed as we receive and extend. It just grows and it comes back and, you know, God, God can feel that's why he sends forth these impulses of love so that it would be magnified. That's what Mary meant when she said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. When we let our soul, our individuated expression of God, magnify that love. Let it increase and grow and spread and to share. We're blessed. And God is just knowing itself in fuller expression. That's the joy of the Lord. Good stuff, sis. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And it's freely given. Freely have received, now freely give. <laughs> doesn't cost us anything. <laughs> no, it doesn't cost anything. No, but it gives everything. Well, thank you, beautiful family, for joining us. Yes. Thank you, sis. We'll see you guys next time. Yeah. Have a blessed day.